Hey guys, what is up and I welcome each and every one of you to a new League of Legends video. Now on this one, we'll be talking about yet what seems to be another league. But this one, I actually think, or at least it looks a lot more believable. Like some leagues that I've talked about or I've shown you guys or shared with you guys before have been, you know, like 50%, you know, believable, not believable, right? This one actually seems like it makes sense, you know? There's a lot of skins leaked that you can see here. There's the new champion, which we thought it initially was Daphne, but apparently her name is Aldora. The new champion designed by um, Mr. Certainly T himself. You can see this, you know, the teaser that Rai gave us, the uh, the champion roadmap, talking about the champion a little bit here. You know, it's me a burst mage made by Certainly T, bubbles and stuff. And it's supposed to take the game from like a different angle here. I approach the fight from a different or interesting angle, they say. So, with all that being said and done, let's just jump right into the leak and let's see exactly what we're dealing with here. So, starting things off, we have Dunk Master Alawe for skins. Dunk Master Alawe. I can see that. I can actually, I can definitely see that her W is kind of the dunk-ish ability. Her ultimate, even more so, of like, you know, she jumps up and, you know, it makes sense. I can definitely see that. Steel Legion of Bane, Vi, and Braum. Let me just go ahead and do this so you guys can see it a bit better. <clears throat> I can see those. I mean, the Steel Legion skins usually are... Here, let's, let's check out the Steel Legion skins very quickly here. Steel Legion. Uh, lol. I forgot to add a lol. Lol. So what do we have for the Steel Legion skins? We have Garen, we have Lux. What else do we have? Are those the only two that we have so far? Garen and Lux, I think it seems like. Which, again, you know, I don't really know the exact theme behind Steel Legion other than it seems like it's Demacian Champions. Demacian Champions. So it's hard to say. I don't remember how many of these are Demacian Champions. I think Vi is now. I think now she is, right? Maybe not. Or, or is she Piltover? I think she's maybe Piltover. I don't remember for sure. But, I mean, again, I don't really know what the whole theme behind Sea Legion even is. So this is, I guess, makes sense. We have Heartseeker Zai and Sweetheart Rakan. I mean, that's just... I can definitely see that. Who who, who cannot see that coming? Heartseeker Zaya, Sweetheart Rakan for, you know, for Valentine's Day, which is, what, in February or something like that? That makes 100% sense to me, right? Makes perfect sense. Now we jump in to uh, all of the... um To the... Uh, what's it called? The Christmas skins, right? We have the three Christmas skins... Festive Ivern makes sense to me. Reindeer Hecarim makes sense to me. Grinch Trundle, the name might change, makes sense to me. That all three of these just they make perfect sense. They they fit the champions theme. They're obviously part of the you know the respective I guess holiday in the sense Christmas, which again is not hard to fake. But based on the champions that is given to. And kind of the theme behind it, you know, having a reindeer Hecarim makes sense. Having kind of like a festive, kind of Santa-ish, maybe Ivern, it makes sense. And of course, Trundle being the Grinch, you know, the, the little kind of, uh, the, the naughty, if you will, very grumpy type of, you know, of the, you know, the Christmas character makes sense to me as well. Following that, we have the uh, Lunar Revel skins, which I believe are the... Um, the the Chinese New Year skins, I believe, right? Are they not? I believe that the Chinese New Year skins. Okay, it's not really giving us a whole lot of uh, League of Legends. I'm just trying to remember exactly who has the Lunar Rebel. Okay, this is just not helping me out here. I guess we could look at this. We have Annie, Corky. Is Kogma's skin part of the Lunar Revel? We have the Sona skin as well, I believe. Looks like I think we have the Caitlyn too. There's a bunch of skins, right? But I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be related to the Chinese New Year's, is it not? So based on that, we have Talia. Aurelian Soul Nasus. These three are the only ones I'm a little bit like, I don't know if it makes sense. I mean, I guess it can make sense. Talia, Aurelian Soul, I can see those two. I can honestly see them. Nasus, a little bit of a random one there. Maybe, maybe not. A little bit harder to believe. But honestly, even just before the Lunar Revel skins, all of these, other than maybe Steel Legion, make perfect sense, right? So based on the skins that were leaked, I think it makes sense. And I believe it. I, I really do. It makes sense a lot of sense anyways new champion so this is what's a bit more interesting here this is what we really came for the new champion her name is not daphne but aldora right there was a kind of um the, the teaser happening currently actually in the live servers where the bubble comes uh to the uh, summoner's earth when you spawn and you can walk into it you become drowsy and then you fall asleep that's essentially the new teaser for the new champion which as we already know uses bubbles right now there was pbe posts that kind of hinted that the new champion's name is a daphne apparently riot has actually confirmed that that is not the case and this guy apparently says that the name of this champion is instead aldora now it's not hard if this guy was keeping up to kind of just fake that right he can know as long as he's keeping up all he has to do is just make some other name and just state that it's not daphne and boom it's suddenly believable it's not hard to fake that so for all we know it could be fake but reading the abilities which we'll go over right now for someone, if if they were fake, assuming that this is a fake leak, this guy went pretty ham on him, man. He went he's he went pretty in depth to fake this because this is some thought out stuff right here. I have to say. So let's check it out. Passive Aldora can jump in between different bubbles, gaining movement speed. As, as we already know, very very heavily focused around the bubble aspect of the champion. 
So the passive is working with uh, all the other abilities. So the Q, Awakening Call. Eldora shoots a line of bubbles, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 10 bubbles, based on the rank of the ability, 1 to 5. Again, rank 5 ability, she'll shoot 10 bubbles, which is quite a bit, in a line, dealing magical damage, right? Plus, the last two bubbles don't hit the enemy, but stay around the area. So for this one, of course, two of the bubbles of the, th of the five, so three of them will do damage, I guess. Two of them will just stay around the area. In this case, uh, 10 of them... Uh, will be will be shot out two of which will not do damage while apparently eight will and the reason that you don't have uh them do damage is i'm assuming if it hits the champion the bubble essentially pops right which makes sense but two of them do not uh hit the enemy champions and stay around the area aka being not popped which i'm assuming is what interacts with her passive jumping in between different uh, bubbles which kind, which kind of like sets the stage i guess for this champion to just be very mobile because we already know based on different uh rider clues that the champion is a mid lane mage that is mobile that is high burst and high safety, which so far, it seems like this champion already fits most of that, right? Has high mobility, has, well, we don't really know the burst part just yet. We don't really know the damage, honestly. This, we don't really get the damage here, unfortunately. But high burst, or high, high mobility and high safety. Makes sense so far. Next, a W. Shut eye. Enemy who is touched, enemies, I guess, who are touched by a single bubble or run into it, sleeps for up to 10 seconds. I actually said that when we were talking about the teaser with the bubbles coming into the Summoner's Rift that I wouldn't be surprised if it's around 10 seconds. I don't know if that guy watched my video and just decided to make it 10 seconds as a meme. Who knows? I don't know. I mean, 10 seconds, to me, it's believable. For rank 5, 10 seconds, it's believable. And the reason for that is because the second part, if the enemy champion is hit by an enemy or minion or champion, he or she wakes up. So you cannot even touch the champion, right? They're essentially just rendered useless. They're sleeping, they're chilling, kind of like Anna from Overwatch. Very similar concept. Uh, much longer than a stun, but the champion is useless, but you also can't touch them. So it's good. It is a good form of CC. Uh, it's essentially a new a new form of CC for League of Legends. So again, this is pretty much what we have currently on the Summoner's Rift, where the bubbles come in, and you know you you feel drowsy, then you fall asleep, right? This is what that is right there. Unfortunately, this ability doesn't talk anything about being drowsy, which kind of you know makes me a little bit skeptical because it does say that you are drowsy at first, but why would you even have that debuff called drowsy for those you know one second or two seconds that it lasts for? If it's essentially useless and you become asleep regardless of whether or not you were drowsy or whether or not you do something during that drowsy state. Anyways, moving into the E ability, Unspeakable Beauty. Aldora controls the bubbles around her. She can pop 2-4 to four bubbles, dealing more damage if they hit each other or turn someone to sleep if she points a bubble into the enemy, but only if Shut Eye is skilled. Right, Shut Eye being the sleeping part. This is a pretty complex ability. This actually sounds quite uh, quite difficult to use properly, right? Let's read it over again just to get a better idea because this takes a little bit to kind of, you know, understand. She controls the bubbles around her, right? Which you know that she summons with her Q ability, right? Her Q ability is what essentially is the bread and butter of her ability. So her Q ability lets her, you know, utilize her passive, lets her utilize her W, lets her utilize her E as well, right? So she uses her Q, boom, she has bubbles. She cannot control those bubbles with the E. She can pop two to four of the bubbles, right? Summoning from five to 10. Uh, dealing more damage if they hit each other. So if the bubbles, so she summons the bubbles in a line, summons rather. She can use them, assuming the E, to force them together to make a maybe bigger bubble or something, or maybe they just pass through and get like a buff or something like that. Uh, more bubble, dealing more damage if they hit each other, or turn someone to sleep if she points a bubble into the enemy, but only if Shut Eye is skilled. So this feels like this can do a lot. This seems like a very, very loaded ability. So it's it's honestly hard to fully grasp what it can do right now. It's one of those abilities you have to see in action, honestly. The R ability. This is where things get interesting. This is where things get spicy. Check it out. One last time. Aldora summons a huge butterfly, which cracks every bubble around her. So in theory, she can have up to... I don't know, actually. How many bubbles can she really have? Only two, maybe? I don't know. Because it says ten bubbles, but do they all disperse? I mean, all, all eight of them disperse, but only two remain? That's what I'm kind of confused about. Anyway, cracks every bubble around her, dealing, you know, XXX amount of damage. Rank 1, 2, 3 of the ultimate ability. Uh, to magic damage to enemy champions. Furthermore, the butterfly changes the summoner spells of the first person she touches. Which means that her, for example, if you have Flash Ignite on that champion, get changed to Dawn and Twilight. The only way to gain the old summoners back is to use the new one. So essentially, I mean, okay, based on how the word this is worded, right? So check it out. Um, don't fall asleep. Obviously, we already know that. Her, clearly, she makes people fall asleep. And hold on to your summoner spells. 
So this is this is what they meant by that, right? Assuming this is true, this is like a legit leak. This is what they meant by that. Dawn, the first summoner spell given to the person that replaces their current ones, like for instance, Flash Ignite. Champion gains move speed. This is after they used the summoner spell, the new ones. Champion gains movement speed similar to Ghost plus more armor and MR. So it seems like it's a good thing for the champion that, you know, gets the enemy champion. In addition, the champion spawns bubbles, which are visible to the enemy champion, but Aldora can use them. So essentially, it just, it just gives Eldora more, I guess, ammo to use uh, her, you know, the rest of her abilities more or less, especially her WE and passive. Twilight, the second summoner spell she gives them. Champions, a champion applies nearsight to all allies surrounding him, surrounding him, but not global. Nearsight is essentially, I believe, similar to uh, Quinn's Q, Graves' W, Smokescreen. Uh, also similar to Nox Alt. Furthermore, the area is okay, or Nox Ultimate. Furthermore, the area is not dark, but rather bright, with mirages all around the place. That sounds weird. She can't use the same bubbles all the time, similar to Yasuo's restrictions, restrictions rather on minions. Now, the only thing that does make sense to me is, sure, you replace their summoner spells with this, but what if they just don't use them? Like, what if you just don't use it in a team fight, and maybe once they're back in their own base, the enemy champion, that you know, they're back in their base, then they use them. Like, what's stopping them from just doing that? You know, and if that's if that's if that's the case, if that's what they can just do, makes me wonder how actually useful this can be. I mean, you are you are replacing something like Flashing Knight in itself, which is already good. But what if Flashing Knight was already on cooldown? Then you're not really getting anything from it. You're giving them something that can potentially be used positively. Like you know, this one gives them move speed and more MR and armor. Or worst case scenario, they just use them in, in their base. What's the what's the downside to that? Is my question. Assuming that their summoner spells initially were already on cooldown. That's what I don't really understand. Again, this is a TLDR. This isn't the full 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 description of all the abilities. I mean, for all we know, it could be false as well. But, I mean, I have to say, even if it does falls, very well thought out for the person that made this. Very, very, very well thought out. But either way, guys, let me know what you think about it down below. Share with your friends. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Like the video if you enjoyed it. If you think this is true or whatever. If you're excited for the new champion coming out by Certainly T. I know I am. And, yeah, that's about it for this video, guys. Thank you for watching. I'll see you for the next one. Peace, peace.